OpenAI is starting a new super alignment team. Why? Because the vast power of super intelligence could be very dangerous and could lead to the disempowerment of humanity or even human extinction. This stance is particularly interesting given that we are at a point in history where there is a significant disparity in views on the risks of AI within the scientific community. Many researchers, including myself, signed the statement that mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. Understandably, not everyone holds this view. A recent Monk debate saw a narrow win against the motion be it resolved, AI research and development poses an existential threat. Though at the end of the debate, the majority of the audience still supported the motion. A recent Nature editorial took the perspective that we should stop talking about tomorrow's AI doomsday when AI poses risks today. The rationale is that talk of artificial intelligence destroying humanity plays into the tech company's agenda and hinders effective regulation of the societal harms AI is causing right now. I would agree that it's a good thing to work to mitigate the current harms of AI, but I disagree that we should also avoid discussion of the existential risks of the technology. The Nature article closes by stating that fear-mongering narratives about existential risks are not constructive. Serious discussion about actual risks and actions to contain them are. This is one perspective, and the Nature editors are entitled to defend it. However, if you take the view, as I do, that AI is advancing very rapidly, it's also important to consider what happens as the models outstrip human intelligence. Though I recognise the limits of an appeal to authority, here are some recent thoughts from Douglas Hofstadter, author of Gödel Escherbach. But the progress, the accelerating progress, has been so unexpected, so completely caught me off guard, not only myself, but many, many people, that there is a certain kind of terror of an oncoming tsunami that is going to catch all of humanity off guard. It's not clear whether that will mean the end of humanity in the sense of the systems we've created destroying us. It's not clear if that's the case, but it's certainly conceivable. If not, it's also, it, it just renders humanity a small a very small phenomenon compared to something else that is far more intelligent and will become incomprehensible to us, as incomprehensible to us as we are to cockroaches. That's an interesting thought. <laughs> well, I don't think it's interesting. I think it's terrifying. I hate it. I do accept that future prediction is an inherently difficult business, and so it's reasonable for people to take very different views. Existential risk skeptics like Mark Andreessen take the view that a precautionary stance that advocates for regulation backed up by the power of the state to mitigate existential risks is non-scientific. What is the testable hypothesis? What would falsify the hypothesis? How do we know when we are getting into a danger zone? These questions go mainly unanswered apart from you can't prove it won't happen. I think there are elements of a valid critique here. I still think it's wise to plan. A useful article here is On the Risks of Emergent Behaviour in Foundation Models by Jacob Steinhardt. He notes that our most recent global crises are the coronavirus pandemic and global warming. The former took over a year to reach a full policy response, while the latter is still struggling after decades of effort. The pace of machine learning is too fast for this. We need to think a decade ahead, starting now. To refer to this form of advanced and more dangerous AI, OpenAI have used the term superintelligence. What is superintelligence? Nick Bostrom defines it as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains of interest. Given that the term AGI is somewhat loosely defined, OpenAI focus on superintelligence rather than AGI to stress a much higher capability level. They say that while superintelligence seems far off now, we believe it could arrive this decade. This decade... That's pretty soon, though they do have a lot of uncertainty over the speed of development of the technology over the next few years. That's one reason why they aim for the more difficult target of aligning a much more capable system. Managing the risks of superintelligence will involve, among other things, solving the problem of superintelligence alignment. The big question is, 
How do we ensure AI systems much smarter than humans follow human intent? Currently, we don't have a solution for steering or controlling a potentially superintelligent AI and preventing it from going rogue. Our current techniques for aligning AI, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback, rely on humans' ability to supervise AI. But humans won't be able to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us, and so our current alignment techniques will not scale to superintelligence. This is closely linked to the challenges I discussed recently in the eliciting latent knowledge problem, where humans are unable to provide reliable supervision labels for things they don't fully understand. Okay, so what's the plan? OpenAI say that their goal is to build a roughly human-level automated alignment researcher. They can then use vast amounts of compute to scale their efforts and iteratively align superintelligence. Personally, I'm very enthusiastic about this as a line of attack. Think about what it means. If you're worried that we're not on track to solve alignment with the few hundred researchers currently working on alignment, if this approach succeeds, the team can be scaled up to include large numbers of AI alignment researchers, dramatically accelerating progress. Of course, there are risks with building this alignment researcher. What if it goes rogue? So, to align the first automated alignment researcher, OpenAI need three things. First, to provide a training signal on tasks that are difficult for humans to evaluate, they can leverage AI systems to assist evaluation of other AI systems. This can enable scalable oversight. In addition, they want to understand and control how their models generalize their oversight to tasks they can't supervise. As we saw in the eliciting latent knowledge problem, the essence of this issue is that if we can only evaluate and annotate a small fraction of the possible actions that an AI will take, how can we be sure that the model that we train on these examples will generalize in the way that we want to the rest of the action space? Let's look at the second ingredient for OpenAI. To validate the alignment of their systems, they plan to automate search for problematic behavior and problematic internals. Their recent work with using GPT-4 to automatically write explanations for the behavior of neurons in large language models and to score those explanations is a promising example of this line of attack. Third, and perhaps most perilous, OpenAI will test their entire pipeline by deliberately training misaligned models and confirming that their techniques detect the worst kinds of misalignments. To try to tackle this problem, OpenAI is assembling a new team. They are giving them 20% of the compute they've secured to date over the next four years to solve the problem of superintelligence alignment. My naive guess would be that this is the largest financial commitment to tackling the alignment research problem to date. Their goal is to solve the core technical challenges of superintelligence alignment in four years. They say that while this is an incredibly ambitious goal and they are not guaranteed to succeed, they are optimistic that a focused, concerted effort can solve this problem. What does that mean? Solving the problem includes providing evidence and arguments that convince the machine learning and safety community that it has been solved. Ilya Sutskeva, co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, has made this his core research focus and will be co-leading the team with Jan Leiker, head of alignment. We now reach the essence of the blog post. They are looking for outstanding new researchers and engineers to join this effort. This could be your chance. One thing that strikes me as particularly encouraging is that OpenAI plan to share the fruits of this effort broadly and view contributing to alignment and safety of non-OpenAI models as an important part of their work. That's it. We've reached the end. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have a wonderful day.